you, Dr. Prescott. We've enjoyed uh, working with uh, Temple Baptist Church and Crown College and several others over the last few months as we've been working with them about getting a plan established. And uh, um, while I am delighted that he has received 16% uh, return in his account, <laughs> I always shudder just a little bit when things like that are said because I can't, I can't tell you what's going to happen tomorrow. I can't, uh, uh, I can't promise you that that level of return will always happen, but the markets have been very generous and it's been a good time to be invested for retirement. Again, my name's Chris Elkins and uh, I have a booth over here in the display area at the church. I'm kind of turned around, I'm not sure which direction it is uh, from here be uh, delighted for any of you to come by and just visit perhaps a little bit more about how your church could participate. One of the big problems or one of the big challenges in retirement plans is that uh, smaller churches, especially the, the, the documentation process and all, it's just a little overwhelming uh, for many, many smaller churches. And, and so we've, we have a way of setting up a plan with an affiliated entity like Independent Baptist Friends in which we can provide a common plan and it just simply requires you just to say our church would like to participate and so there's no legal documentation there's no lawyers involved there's there's it's 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 a simple process uh, for the smaller churches guidestone is a 501c3 not for not for profit ministry organized uh, at least from a tax perspective just like your church and as much as i'm going to sound like a used car salesman today and surely i'm going to make a commission if you guys check a box or do something we don't work that way at guidestone Stone. This is a ministry for us. None of us work on commissions. We, it is our desire to walk alongside you. We feel God has called you to pronounce the message. God has called us to walk alongside the messengers and see what we can do to help you be able to protect your families, your, uh, uh, your future, those kinds of things. Now, none of us, none of us feel like a retirement plan is your security. Uh, it, is, it is a means of stewardship. It is a way that you can take the lots of resources or just a little resources and, and use them in such a way to help you, perhaps in the future, as Dr. Sexton was mentioning this morning, uh, um, perhaps in retirement, and that's an interesting word we'll d deal with here in just a second, but in retirement, you might be freer and more able to do more of what God has called you to do at those years of your life than at absolutely any other time. But it requires getting started. It requires understanding a process. It requires committing to it and, 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 and being involved. I have a lot of information here, and I'm gonna move through it fairly quickly. Um, I I will do my best to watch the time, but somebody <laughs> stand up and wave when we're out of time. I realize I'm standing between you and lunch, and I just don't want to get caught in the traffic flow there. So I will do my best to move through this material as quickly as possible. I want you to stop me and ask me to repeat something, or you don't understand that, or does this, this, this or that mean this, or something or other. This in no wise, no way, compromises the autonomy of your church. You are an independent operating entity. We deal with you, with the other groups like uh, 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 the BBFI, uh, we deal with each one of those churches individually. While, while they're under a common plan that didn't require them to draft documents, we deal with absolutely each one of those churches uh, individually. And so, so it's just, it's, it's a way to hopefully help you prepare for the future. Now, God's Word, as, uh, as usual, uh, says it pretty straight on. Let me read this to you. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and, the, and thy want as an armed man. When Guidestone was formed back almost 100 years ago, we're just within a couple of years of the 100th anniversary, the reason it was put together is so many preachers were retiring in poverty. So many of their widows were not being taken care of. And so, 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 so a group of men got together in Dallas and said, We've, we need to do something about this. And so, so at the heart of Guidestone is actually a benevolent ministry that's still taking care of preachers retiring in poverty, still taking care uh, of their widows, is, is the heart and core really of, of who we are. But we learned quickly that we need to provide tools in your hands that will allow you then to prepare for your future and you to prepare for what God has called you to do. Again, um, 
it, it, it's, it's, so much of this is, is, is the parable of the talents. Whether God has put a lot of resources in your hands or just a little bit of resources in your hands, he expects you to use them wisely. And we want to be a vehicle and a conduit to help you make wise decisions. It is our experience in dealing with thousands and thousands of churches. And we deal with 200,000 participants that are missionaries and pastors and, and, and serve in varieties of ministries uh, around the world that you weren't called and many of you are not terribly focused on dollars and cents. We understand that, and that's why we organize in the way we organize. We make materials available, understanding available, help available. Some of you are going to say, boy, if I get involved in a Guidestone plan, I want someone to tell me how to invest. We'll do that for you. We won't charge you a penny to walk you through an advisory system that any other financial entity out there is going to charge you for. We'll walk you through, and we'll actually tell you exactly how we think you ought to uh, ought to invest, but it's up to you to get involved. It's up to you uh, to, take the, to, to take the next step. Most of us are going to need somewhere between 70 and 90 percent of our pre-retirement income in retirements. Uh, many of you that are pastors in this room, you're currently drawing a housing allowance, likely as part of your income. One of the great things that Guidestone brings to the table is the ability to extend housing allowance into your retirement benefits. In other words, you're going to have the capability of investing in a tax sheltered basis. It grows tax sheltered. And many of you and many of the pastors that draw a benefit from us in retirement draw 100% of their benefit from us as a housing allowance in retirement because the, the rules and the law allow for that. Why? It's, it, it, is a, it is an incredible benefit because Guidestone's initial identity was as a denominational uh, uh, a retirement provider. The IRS has granted us the ability to serve the churches that we serve that we can extend this kind of benefit. So not only what Charles mentioned just a few, min few minutes ago, uh, related to our fund structure, and we'll get into that if we get that far today. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, we, we want to honor the Lord at every place we can, and be sure you are aware of what is available to you to use every dollar you have wisely. Why pay taxes if, you, if there is a way that you, that you can legally, uh, morally, ethically not have to do that? If you draw a retirement out of an IRA, I promise you a couple of things. Number one, you're going to start drawing it at 70 and a half, whether you want want it or not. In a 403B plan that we're going to make available through uh, Independent Baptist Friends, you can actually delay it. You can, don't have to take it at 70 and a half. You'll have an option every year to push it out. You're also going to be allowed to invest in funds that do not well, you know, we're going to offer you a family of mutual funds to invest in, and you're going to decide how much risk you want to take. No one's going to decide that for you. You're going to decide for yourself how much risk you want to take. But none of these funds are invested in companies that are publicly identified with alcohol, tobacco, pornography, abortion, or gambling. Anheuser-Busch may be a wonderful investment, and they may have earned 25% to Charles' 16% last year, but you'll, they will never show up in a portfolio list. If you read the news last week, you know all the issues that, uh, um, oh, what's the company that's, um, <laughs> it's not Home Depot. Uh, <laughs> Hobby Lobby, thank you. I don't know why that went out of my mind. Uh, that Hobby Lobby, you know, is, is, is fighting because they don't want to, uh, through their medical plan, they don't want to provide uh, abortion-causing drugs. And so there's a lot of uh, wrangling going on there. A newspaper article came out last week and said, now it's interesting that Hobby Lobby says they don't want to provide that, and yet they found companies in the portfolio of their retirement plan that guess what they do? They make abortion drugs. And so, 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 so it's interesting how the secular media shined a light on that issue. And so we think it's really important that our walk and our talk match up. Will that sometimes cost you in terms of performance? It's possible. But, uh, but we have found the Lord has blessed and blessed and blessed again as we have, as we have moved down, as we move down this pike. Um, we're going to live longer. And I know all of you, I mean, I'm, there's many men sitting in this room right now that just praise Jesus is going to take you straight from the pulpit. So you're just going to go, right, you're going to go into glory uh, uh, with, with a sermon on your lips. It won't necessarily happen that way for all of us. And we've got to prepare for the years where being somebody's employee doesn't make a lot of sense. That doesn't mean God's call has been taken off of your life. But almost all of us on some form or fashion will have to embrace the idea of vocational retirement. 
retirement. Not a retirement from what God has called you to do. You continue to preach, you continue to teach, and if you have built up enough of a retirement fund, you can do it any place on the planet and not require any remuneration from anybody because, like the ant, you took advantage <laughs> in the summer and began to store things away and began to store away for the day and time where, where you could be a, uh, a, be a, uh, a powerful, powerful uh, um, a witness. Um, some of you already know who Guystone Financial Resources is. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time. I want you to know there were more than just a little lean-to uh, our storefront in downtown Dallas. Uh, we manage $12 billion in retirement assets uh, for more than 37,000 churches in the United States uh, at various mission-serving organizations. Uh, I've already mentioned that we have a plan just like the one that we are working with uh, Dr. Prescott and others to establish uh, here among, among uh, Baptist friends that we have done this with uh, like BBFI and some others who too value autonomy. It's, it, it is a key piece of who they are and, and, and we know how to put this together in such a way that that won't be violated. That's the building uh, that when I'm in Dallas, uh, I go to, it's just north side of downtown Dallas. Anytime you're around, we would love for you to, uh, uh, we'd love for you to come by. Um, we've been doing this since 1918. We're the nation's largest Christian-based, socially screened, registered mutual fund family. Period. Hands down. Uh, we believe God uh, has blessed this. Uh, there is an, a, a key alignment of values that we feel we have with those who, who, who use Guidestone, uh, uh, Guidestone plans. Um, these are oftentimes referred to as associational retirement plans. We call it an umbrella retirement plan. It's just a, it's just a term that says several are getting together for a common purpose. It doesn't mean that there's any, any wise, any kind of, of polity uh, that draws you together. You've just simply chosen to group together. Uh, we do this with churches and ministries. Uh, it allows employers as well as the employees to contribute to the plan. There's no minimum participation. I talked to a pastor this morning who's sitting up a retirement plan for his church and that they're requiring five hundred thousand dollars for them just to sit up and start the plan um, we'll start with one dollar uh, we'll, we'll get you started uh, we're gonna we're gonna and we're gonna take you where you are and and go on from there uh, it's done through a lot of um, most of the billing and account maintenance is very easy to do uh, done via online um, I, I think you'll find that, that there's just a whole lot of, of, of wonderful things now in a plan that treats several different churches uh, uh, under a common plan there's some things that you the church have to decide you'd have to decide who in your church is eligible to participate in the plan who among your staff can do it. That's your decision. No one's deciding that for you. You have to decide, are you as a church going to contribute as a benefit to the plan rather than requiring all contributions to come carved out of salary kind of thing? That's the church's decision, uh, uh, those kinds of things. There are some things like um, that are common in the plans of 100% vesting. That means you own all the money the day the money hits your account. You own it. No one else owns this money. It's always all yours from, from the moment it's invested. So there's not vesting schedules if you're familiar with 401k plans. It's possible to borrow money out of the plan if you need it for emergencies and such as that. There are some other issues like this age 59 and a half. If for some reason you have to go part time and want to continue to serve the church, in the past you would have to completely sever service in order to draw a retirement. But these days you can actually draw a what's called a limited retirement benefit through this plan starting as early as age 59 and a half and remain in service. Um, and it's called, it's referred to as the limited uh, retirement benefit. And at the severance of employment, you go from X, church X to church Y, the assets are all available to you to roll to a new plan. You always own all of the assets that are in the plan. Any questions about anything I've said so far? Have you figured out I talk kind of fast and I, I, I truck through this stuff? I'm trying to watch for time to get through uh, uh, as much uh, as much. Yes. Oh. Dominic, I'll write you a little check. You said that just no, exactly I right. <laughs> no, I did not play at him in the audience. <laughs> Yeah, so, so some of you uh, already have Guidestone accounts because you've served a Southern Baptist church maybe somewhere along the line or a BBFI church or some other church that, uh, other group that has used us as a retirement provider and you may have a Guidestone yeah, accounts yeah, already. Yes? In, uh, in, Jersey. in Jersey? Great. Well, so, 
And see, and that's and, and 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 so we want to make this as easy as possible and as inexpensive as possible. Again, go back to the we're a not-for-profit financial services organization. Uh, you know, we're going to do this as inexpensively as possible, but at the same time, we need to provide you world-class results. We need to compete with the T. Rowe prices and the Fidelities and the and the big financial houses out there. Uh, and so, when someone like uh, Charles Prescott stands up in front of you and says, "I've received great returns," it means that we have an investment team that is. Is th that stays on top of this all the time, and and because we're working through some guidelines and some filters, um, it's it's an amazing process. But I, but I just want you to know that that at that if you set up if your church decides to uh, uh, come through um, Baptist Friends to set up a retirement plan with us, then you will decide about employer contributions. You will be the one who uh, uh, works with your own employees about setting this kind of thing up. Uh, there will not be any governance, any control uh, coming from anywhere else except for, except for your church. You'll decide how often you make the contributions, how much, the, I mean, it's, it's, uh, th those decisions, I just simply want you to know, are, are all in your plan. A 403b9 is a church plan. I, there's very little reason that a church would ever want a 401k. That's for the profit-making world. 403b is the not-for-profit world, and a 403b9 is a church plan. And church plans, if you know anything about 401ks in the profit world and those kind of things, they have discrimination testing and universal availability. None of that is true in a church plan. Uh, you have lots of latitude in a church plan, and, and the, then we get benefits like uh, you know, housing allowance distributions and things like that. There's just some wonderful things. Uh, another thing about a, uh, a 403b9 plan is a high contribution limits. You can, any of you, any age, could contribute as much as $17,500 a year. Now, you have to make at least $17,500 a year to contribute it through your payroll, but, but anyway, th th that's, th that's the amount with, the, with an IRA, I believe the limit is $5,500 a year. So, so, so high. between you and the church, you could put in that much. Now, if you can find a church that'll put in the difference between those two, I need to be on the staff of that church. So, <laughs> so just, just, but just know that the limits, the limits are high. One thing that I like, I'm one of these guys who's had the great privilege of being more than 50 years old. Praise God, I got to live more than 50 years, and now I've got to live more than 60 years. And I want you to know it gets really sweet on this side because you, your grandchildren just adore you and it, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It just makes you glad you didn't do something bad to your own children by the time the grandchildren come along. Um, um, there, there's age, th th there are catch-ups that you can add. You can actually go from this 17.5 actually up to $26,000 a year with catch-ups and some of us toward the end of our employment years have extra uh, uh, income once the kids are out of the house and things like, I can't keep my kids out of the house as part of the problem, but, but uh, 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 they have extra income that you can uh, that you can that you can that, that, that you can put in and so we want you to know that we're going to help you we're going to educate you part of our job is to be sure that you have tools and information in your hands we do lots of webinars uh, for people who say I, I need to learn more about how to invest I need to learn how to take a retirement benefit I, I do these webinars every month uh, and people can just log in you can sit yes Yes. Yeah. no idea how to treat this. And you guys sent us a little pamphlet uh -huh. about how to prepare ministerial taxes and right. all those things. And you educated our our CPA. <laughs> And see, and this, this is a big thing. I'm glad you said this. This is a big thing. Not all CPAs understand church plans. I want you, or understand ministers' taxes. Be careful. They don't realize that, that as a minister, you actually have a dual tax status. Uh, the, the Social Security considers you self-employed. You get the privilege of paying that 15.3% self-employment tax, where the rest of the world pays 7.65 to Social Security. You get to pay 15.3%. Congratulations. Uh, um, and, uh, but the IRS considers you an employee. Um, um, with some exceptions, most of us ought to be drawing W-2s from our churches because we're con considered employees. They can fire us. I mean, we're considered employees. Uh, so, but, so you've got a dual tax status. Not all, not all people who do taxes understand that. So if you go down here to Walmart to get your tax, whoops, that's, that was yesterday was the deadline day. Uh, they may not always understand how to treat you and how to treat some of the provisions uh, uh, for you for taxes. But part of our job is to help you uh, and provide resources for you. Um, 
um, uh, you can, wh when you get ready to uh, enroll people, there's a real easy access that enrollment happens. Uh, it's all online. There's, f there's just a ton of stuff that's available to you. I'm not going to spend any time talking about that right now. But if you go online, to, like Dominic may have, and has actually has a user ID and a password, and maybe Charles does too, to get into his own account, you're going you're gonna to come to a page that looks something like this, and you're going to see the value of your account in the various places you may have invested money with us. You're going to see all your quarterly accounting statements right here if you want to. Oh, no, that, that's, that's something different than quarterly. There's a quarterly accounting statement right there. Uh, you can see all the activity going into your account, recent contributions, recent reinvestments of dividends. How far down do you want to dig? This thing, this thing will project for you. If you keep doing what you're doing right now, this is how much money you're going to end up with or somewhere in the neighborhood. Those calculators are a little... Um, um, Inaccurate is too strong a word, but, but, the, the, but you just need to be careful sometimes of calculators. But they will help you better understand, am I doing enough? I get asked one of two questions every day by people who participate in a Guidestone plan. Am I investing enough, and am I invested correctly? It's hard to answer those questions. Are you investing enough? Well, how much do you want accumulated by the time you get to retirement? Where's the income going to come from? Well, okay, Social Security is going to replace some of it, but what do you think is going to happen to Social Security in the next few years? It's not going away. It's going to change. The formulas must change because of the way it's put together. It's going to change. For most of you, it will not provide more than 25, 30 percent of your needs in retirement, and that might even be less in the future. So where's the rest of that going to come from? Well, you're going to preach every Sunday. Well, I run into some, some guys my age and older who don't get the, the opportunities they thought they were going to get. Uh, so so where's, the, where, where's all that going to come from? Aunt Sally's going to leave you uh, <laughs> a boatload of money. Well, I don't have an Aunt Sally to do that for me. So unless I take something like this pretty serious and begin to start working on it pretty quickly, um, then two or three things get to be really, uh, uh, really um, obvious. I'm going to have to learn phrases like... Welcome to Walmart. Or do you want fries with that? Because I'm going to have to do little jobs like that in retirement. And when you see older people doing those jobs, it's not because they're lonely or bored. They need the income. I can guarantee you, in 90% of the cases, the people you see doing that, there's just simply not enough dollars in retirement. So I can't emphasize to you how important it is to get started. We'll take you by the hand and explain to you how to use this stuff. How, uh, again, we understand ministers and ministry, and some of you want to make one decision, walk away from it, and never look at it again until it's time to, you know, it's, it's kind of like, how do you want to make a cake? Do you want to do all the scratch ingredients yourself? Do you want to, uh, or do you want to get a cake mix, and maybe somebody else has done a little of the work, or most of you want to just want to go to the bakery and get a cake. Uh, we'll do it any style you want to do it. We'll do it from scratch with you, We'll do a, a, some sort of prepackaged mix approach with you, or, or you just say, you know, this is about the year I want to retire. You, you put it together, and we'll we'll do any level of that depending on what your level of interest is, and in, in terms of uh, of this kind of thing. This thing called guided planning services is wonderful. This is the legal advising arm of who we are, and we're going to show you. How, how long your money is going to last in retirement. We're going to show you how much you need to put in now if you want to extend this, how much difference you need to do. Um, you need, again, whether you've got just a little bit of resources or a lot, this is a super helpful tool. You can go online and do it for yourself, or you can just call Guidestone and say, would someone take me by the hand? You don't have to say it that way, but would someone help me do this? And we'll just, we'll, we'll get someone on the line with you. And, and we'll do this. Uh, maybe you've got a smartphone. Uh, I, you know, when the markets move strongly one direction or other, I have a tendency to look at my smartphone app and see what it did to my account uh, that particular day. Um, and understand that a retirement account is not like a savings account at the bank. You are buying shares in mutual funds and you're stacking them up. And anytime you see a dollar a figure associated with your account, we presume we sold all the shares that day. That's how much you would have gotten. That figure changes every day. Now, it's been wild the last few days. The markets have been way up and way down, and any of us are watching this closely. That's why some of us back away from risk when we get this age. There was a day in time where the most important thing for my account was to grow it, and so I took some risks with this account. But I'm now at an age where the most important thing of my account is to protect it. And so now I'm investing in a way that protects the asset. It never grows. I don't take as much risk as Charles does. I don't get 16%, but, but <laughs> I'm not going to lose 16% either. 
<laughs> Charles, you're not going to lose 60 percent. So you're not just, but you know, just with with risk, with risk is a good thing. And most of us are very conservative in our natures, and words like risk we're uncomfortable with. But risk sometimes serves you really well, especially at certain ages. Uh, uh, it makes a lot of sense, and we'll be glad we'll be glad to help you with it. Quarterly statements are a part of it all. We have a wonderful customer service center. Uh, they're open uh, every day Central Time from seven in the morning to six in the evening, business days, I should say. Uh, and we actually answer the phone. Now, when you call in, you're going to get this little recording. And if you don't want to listen to the little recording, just punch zero. It puts you in line to talk to a person. And you will, be, you will deal with per, a person from that point on. And, and nine times out of ten, the person who answers the phone is going to be able to help you. Uh, we uh, uh, bring to completion 98.2% of our incoming calls at the first point of contact. And you want, you know, some of you are a little hesitant to call. Uh, it's an 888 number. You know, there's about 50 people on our staff that have a job because you make phone calls. And they love for you to call. And you'll be treated with respect. And in some cases, they're going to pray with you. And in some cases, they're going to grieve with you. Uh, uh, th uh, they're going to help you. They're going to walk alongside you. Uh, these, are, th these are wonderfully trained folks. Uh, you can get into automatic call tracking and workflows. I w most of us don't want, like that kind of stuff. But let me quickly talk about the fund structure. If you decide that your church wants to participate, you're absolutely no requirement to, it will cost you absolutely nothing to get started. Absolutely nothing. You'll set up a, a, an employer number with us, and any people who get the W-2 from your church can participate. Now, you may say, well, no, only the ministers are going to participate. That's fine. That's your decision. That's the church's decision. As far as we're concerned, anyone who gets a W-2 from your church at the end of the day can actually begin to start saving for retirement. You may or may not, as a church, decide to make contributions to your employees' plans. That's the church's decision to do things like that. No one's going to require it. Uh, uh, you're fortunate when you have an employer who also puts, who also puts money into this besides what your car uh, out of your salary. When the, we will bill the church every month. You say you want to put in $100 a month and the church is going to get a bill once a month for $100 for your, and they're going to have held it out of your paycheck perhaps, $50 a, you know, twice a month kind of thing, and they will send it to us. You will have already given us instructions when you enroll on how to invest the money once it shows up. Within 24 hours of the time it's shown up, it is invested. It's not going to sit around anywhere. It's going to get invested uh, immediately. You'll be able to tell about by, usually about after 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening, you can go and look at your account and see what the market movement they did to your value up and down and those kinds of things. I suggest you don't do a whole lot of that. It'll just give you ulcers to tell you the truth. There's a lot of things that are counterintuitive about investing, and we don't have time to get into those today, but maybe in the future we'll have some sessions where we'll talk about how do you make good decisions when it comes to a retirement investing. And, and, and doing it the way I do it is not necessarily the right way for you to do it. It depends on your age and your need and your assets. And it just, there's a whole lot of factors that play into how to invest. Guidestone funds are our family of funds. We control where the money is invested. Uh, while we use world-class money managers on Wall Street and at the various marketplaces, uh, they work under close guidance from us. We give them lists of companies you may not invest in. Uh, and we have a whole family of mutual funds. Uh, and I'm going to give you all a packet here in a sec. I was going to give it to you to begin with, but then you would just be looking at the packet rather than listening to me. Uh, but I'm going to give you this stuff because it'll get to be a little distracting to you. But we're going to talk through the funds. Do we compete with the big boys? Actually, this is an old slide. As of about two weeks ago, for the third straight year, we've won another Lipper Award. And that means we're performing. That's all about performance. Lipper, Morningstar, if you're familiar with uh, mutual funds. Uh, we are proud of the management that we bring uh, within the guidelines that we operate. And the industry says, you guys are doing a good job. Uh, you're outperforming your peers, and so so we're we're real proud we're, we're we're real proud of that. But here is our social policy statement. I'm going to read it to you. The funds do not invest in any company that is publicly recognized as determined by Guidestone Financial Resources as being in the liquor, tobacco, gambling, pornography, or abortion industries, or any company whose products, services, or activities are publicly recognized as being incompatible with the moral and ethical posture of Guidestone Financial Resources. Uh, we have a, a subset of our trustees who do nothing but look at this. And we get phone calls every day and say, are you investing in the XYZ company? Do you realize they? And then a process, a research process starts. Can we? Now, does this mean we're at a zero tolerance position? Boy, it's hard in, in, in our intertangled economy to be at what would be considered a zero uh, tolerance. Let, let me give you an example. American Airlines. While they probably have personnel policies that we would object to greatly, and while they serve 
alcohol on their airplanes, uh, you may see American Airlines show up on the portfolio list because they are not publicly perceived as being in the liquor, tobacco, gambling, pornography, or abortion industries. Do you see what I'm saying here? That, that there, I, I don't want you to hear zero tolerance from me. I don't want you to feel misled at all. Uh, that there, and there could be entanglements. And sometimes when we find out about those entanglements, then that company goes onto our list. Uh, but we do have people who watch over that absolutely every, every, every single day. I talked a little while ago about the, at the, about the various ways to invest. How much work do you want to do? You want to build your own portfolio? Uh, do you want a one choice approach where you've got a, uh, um, uh, you just make a decision based around a year, actually, I'll show you this in a second. Or do you want um, um, where like a cake mix where there's, some, where there's some mutual funds in a box and you just <laughs> add money and stir kind of thing? Uh, how much work do you want to put into this? How much uh, uh, do you want to, uh, how much do you want to look at it? We have uh, bond funds, money market funds. The, the, these guys are on the low uh, end, ri low risk end of things. Uh, uh, you'll notice the word equity shows up in almost every one of these funds. Uh, these are again names of individual mutual funds. We have a value equity fund. Now, other companies may offer you 10 value equity funds. The, the way Guidestone is different is we may have 10 different companies that, that manage part of our value equity fund. We just say, here's one fund with 10 different approaches that, so that you get the benefit of various people's styles, rather than offering you 10 different funds that look almost exactly alike and you're trying to figure out which one of these is which. So, so, so we do a multi-manager approach. We try to keep this as simple as possible. We've just recently added an emerging markets fund, a flexible income is fund is coming out here uh, in a few days. Uh, um, we're constantly tr doing, doing our best to try to provide you uh, investment opportunities that will help you. If, if you go after a My Destination, and this is probably the most popular thing uh, that we have. Depending on the, I was born in 1951. In the year 2016, oh my goodness, that's like 18 months away. In the year 2016, uh, I am going to be 65 years old. So where, which one of these funds would be bad? Well, this 2015 fund, it comes closest to a time I'm going to consider retirement. These, uh, remember all the name of those funds we just looked at? This takes every one of those funds and is constantly rebalancing them as I get older. As, it, as we approach, the, if I'm in the 2015 fund, when we reach that year, that's next year, this fund will be half stocks and half bonds, half risky stuff, half safe stuff. Because it started off all risky stuff and it's been gradually backing off as it approaches its target year. Depending on the year you were born, would, and this is, this is the go to the bakery approach. Someone else is going to reallocate it for you and you just show up at retirement and pick it up. It's done. Uh, but some of, you want more, some of you want more management of it and I absolutely uh, understand that. And can, you say, say, well, I want to start off here, but maybe someday I want to do more of the work myself. Anytime, anytime. You can make changes among these funds. It doesn't cost you to make changes among these funds. Uh, there are some limitations that FINRA and the SEC brings to how many times can you make trades. You can't day trade this thing, guys. Um, and almost everyone fails that tries to day trade. It just, it, very, very few people are very successful uh, at that. It requires lots of good guesses, and most of us aren't uh, that good at, good at guessing. Uh, these asset allocation, uh, start, uh, the, the, there are four of these, and these are kind of like cake mixes. They're pre-mix, but they're static. They're never going to change. This one's always going to be 75% bonds and 25% stock. Um, so you say, well, I want to buy this one right now because I want to take a lot of risk. I want this thing to grow like crazy. But when I get to be Chris Elkin's age, I want, oh boy, I want to be here. I don't want, I, this because this stuff's more stable. It never earns very much, but it's more stable. This stuff's like a wild, big roller coaster ride. So, uh, and boy, here lately, it has been a quite a roller coaster ride. The last few days uh, have been particularly so. Um, I'm not going to. So how do FI360 and Lipper and Morningstar, again, I only bring this to your attention because I want you to know that you don't have, th there, there's a balance you're trying to strike here between your values and how you look at the world and what's important to you and value. Are, are you being a good steward and are you getting a good return? The, the values value 
balance is the thing that we're trying to strike here for you. And, and, and you come in and you decide in terms of direction of risk and, and direction of how much you invest, uh, those kind of things are all in your hands. But we're going to provide you the vehicle uh, uh, to go about doing that in a, uh, um, in a, in a, in a really positive, uh, positive way. Um, we've talked all, already about some of this kind of stuff. Uh, if, so let's say you already have an IRA or you've got a 401k when you used to work at Walmart or you've got a, another 403b from some other ministry you were in. Can you roll these things together? Absolutely. And we actually, we have a team that'll help you do it. They'll fill out the forms for you if you want them to do that. A lot of us get intimidated by these financial forms, and, but these guys will dog it and stay on it until it actually happens. Uh, financial organizations, as Dr. Prescott can tell us, are not always real wild about sending money out. <laughs> and so, so sometimes they got to be dogged just a little bit to make sure uh, that that actually happens. But again, there are services that don't cost you anything. Uh, and in most cases, traditional IRA, 401k, other 403bs can ro be rolled into this Guidestone 403b account. And there's some huge benefits uh, for you to for you to do it that way. I am almost out of time, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not out of slides. I want you to know that. Uh, so, so I'm going to kind of stop here and say, okay, have I start a question or something you would like to know more about, about who we are as an organization, about how a 403B retirement plan works, about our fund structure and how we go about doing that. I tried to give you a 30,000-foot view of kind of a big picture view of all of this without, um, none of you went to sleep because you're hungry, I think, is probably what it is. Any questions? How do you make your money? Good question, good question. I don't think I have a slide in here that would adequately show, but if you ever looked at our fund, we have a fund performance sheet, and, and you'll, there are all these columns, what, you know, what happened yesterday, what happened this month, what happened this year, and you'll see about, oh, 10 or 12 columns. The last two columns over there on the, on, uh, are, uh, it says net expense ratio. And we have a gross position and a net position, expense ratios. Every mutual fund has expense ratios built into them. And the bottom line of this, uh, Charles said, and I'm just picking on him, he said that he earned 16%. Well, let me tell you something. He probably earned about 17%, but by the time we told him he earned 16, we kept a percent of that to, to fund our organization and keep us up and running. So they're called indirect expense ratios. You never see a minus sign. Now, depending on... There is a potential quarterly fee in a 403b plan, depending on the asset size in the plan. If the asset size is less than $15,000 per participant, the average, in other words, you take it all together, all the assets together, divide by the number of participants. If that number is at least 15,000, then there's no other fees, as long as it's below that there's a $12 quarterly fee. So there is, could possibly be a fee, depending on the asset size uh, w uh, with the Baptist Friends with the Baptist Friends Plan. Uh, groups like uh, BBFI have never been charged. Uh, they've gone after this with great gusto and, um, and they've never been charged quarterly fees. So how do I get a, a check? It's not from a commission from your decisions. It is simply, I'm paid a salary based on, on how the funds do. And so uh, that has a huge impact on, on, my, on, on how Guidestone operates. There are about 450 of us, but we're managing about $12 billion in retirement assets. And so, so, so why, have, why, why did this move from Southern Baptist only to the greater evangelical world? Because we're all benefited. The more assets under management in a not-for-profit environment, the lower the fee structure will be for everybody concerned. And so, so we can bring the economies of scale to the table. We have the staff already put together. We have the experts at hand. So, so why should BBF or World Baptist Fellowship or any other group try to put together an organization like this where, where you can come in and, and, and through your own portal access what we've already built? And so, so that's, that's kind of the approach. That's how... Did I, I did the classic drive a thumb drive drive a thumbtack with a sledgehammer. I way over answered your question, but uh, um, but bottom line is we have there's some indirect expenses in the fund that fund our organization. Uh, we we get no we get no money from the Southern Baptist Convention. We get no money from any. We, 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 we don't charge anybody anything to set up a 403b plan. Any church, any church, any ministry organization. This is, does not cost them uh, because our fund structure covers it. Anything else? Oh. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, you, do you have to be, uh, I'm assuming, you have to be an American citizen? You have to have at least have a green card. Or social, you, have, you just have to have a social security number. If you've got a social security number, you can participate. Does it matter how you came in? Hmm. And well, 
some plans have built different little bells and whistles. I mean, so, some of the plans are different from some of the other plans, but, but it doesn't really matter. And to, I don't know what you mean by matter. Oh, that's right. Your church act came to us and we set up a plan for your church. And tr any of your churches, even, even, if, even once this, this uh, Baptist Friends plan is set up, any of your individual churches could come to us and say, no, we want our own plan. Well, we'll set this up for you. We set up plans for as few as one person on a staff. I mean, so size is not an issue. But generally, small churches just simply don't have someone who will take the initiative to get this. And, and, and then there's keeping the documents updated. And, and if you, when you have your own plan, there's some pl pl you, you, you become a plan sponsor, and you have some responsibilities, some fiduciary responsibilities as a plan sponsor that most small organizations just simply don't want to uh, don't want to deal with. And so what we'll do, uh, once this is up and running, every year we'll s sit with Dr. Sexton and, do and Dr. Prescott and say, here's the churches that are participating. Uh, uh, th there's no benefit, no benefit to them. We just, we, we will be accountable though, back to the uh, uh, Baptist friends and say, th th this is how, my, who's how many churches are participating. This is the asset size. This is what's happened generally in terms of, 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 of participant returns in the plan. Uh, uh, we, will be held, we will be very transparent and accountable about how the plan operates. And any of you are welcome to see any of that information.